No, my dear nerds, I recorded this video roughly an hour ago and I managed to talk for 55 minutes straight. And I was like, fudge that, I'm not gonna edit that, that's gonna be three days of editing, I'm gonna be late with this video, we're all gonna have white beards until I eventually release it, so I'm gonna do something very brave, quotation marks included, and I'm gonna rant about this big chunker of a boy, which is the RG40XXV, and I'm gonna try to do this with as little editing as possible. I'm not gonna hype this to hell and back, I'm not gonna do that, because as you might know by now, Anbernek has released a ton of handhelds with the same H700 SoC, meaning that this fancy new RG40XXV doesn't really offer much else in terms of performance than what the RG35XX Plus from what seems like a million years ago used to offer. All of the Anbernek Linux handhelds, which aren't super old, they play the same thing, meaning they top up at GameCube and a bit of PSP, you know, like half the catalog I would say, and that's kinda it. So, what does this one, wait a second, Ugh, did you hear that sound? What does this one have that makes it stand out if anything that the RG40XXV can do, all the others can? And I actually started thinking about this, my dear nerds. I borderline obsessed over this because I didn't have an answer. When it comes to the advantages of the RG40XXV, the advantages are kind of the same as driving a Hummer versus driving a normal, normal person car. Look, I'm not sure if these are popular in the US or not, but this is a smart car. The smart car is such a small car that a lot of my American nerds would look at it and be like, what is this, a car for my dog? Is this a baby car? Is this the car that I would give my kid to train on before I buy him the real thing? They would make jokes like, I can bench press this car, I can take three of these cars and juggle them around and join the circus. I imagine that driving a Hummer is like driving a freaking sp spaceship, it's like you're on the Enterprise. I never even been inside a Hummer, I can only extrapolate that the feeling of driving a Hummer is similar to playing your retro games on something like the RG40XXV versus something like, wait for it, the tiny Mio Mini, which by the way, I'll have a video on this as well, stick around for that. When you play something on this, you feel the compromise of the size and form factor, but when you play on something like this, you feel like you're driving a Hummer, you feel like you have spaciousness, your hands never get tired, you don't have to do weird positions when you grasp this freaking thing, Everything just sits naturally because you have a lot of real estate to spread on. But anyway, my dear nerds, before I continue, I just want to quickly say that this specific RG40XXV was provided to me by the nice guys at LitNXT. If you don't know about LitNXT yet, honestly, you're missing out. This is not a sponsored anything, I just like these guys. The guys at LitNXT are retro passionate people like you and me, which just so happen to have a store that sells retro handhelds. They have very competitive prices and I couldn't recommend them enough. But as always, and it's important for you to know, this is not a sponsored video, meaning that they have no editorial input here. If this handheld uh, sucks, I'm gonna be the first one to criticize it. Whatever I say in this video represents my thoughts and my thoughts alone. There's gonna be links in the description along with a coupon slash voucher which I encourage you to use because who wants to buy retail? But anyway, going back to our video with us, and at first glance there's nothing really important to see here. Ambernick for a while now has served us these generic white boxes, starting from the Linux handheld and all the way to their more expensive Android handhelds. All of them, including the Cube, has a box like this. In fact, I got a few boxes to illustrate my point here. Just check this out. This is the RG40XXV from Ambernick. 
Bam! Do you see the similarities, my dear nerds? And we have the RG40XXH, which one could call the closest cousin to this one, you know, like, get along, you two bastards. You shouldn't be enemies. And the SP as well has a similar design. So, some people might say that this is awesome, that this is consistency, and they and this certainly helps with brand recognition but call me a naysayer i would really love to see a bit more color a bit more variety you know the world shouldn't be as black and white we could talk about entropy and the fact that everything is meaningless and put a lot of black and non-color in everything let the boxes <laughs> at least <laughs> bring some freaking color in our lives you know and through the magic of editing i got rid of them and by getting rid of them, I mean I put them in a closet of mine where I collect them. I don't want to use the word hoarding them. I collect them. <laughs> Please send help. But going back to our little big baby here. Let's take this off. And let's do the world's quickest unboxing ever, my dear nerds. We have a very important plastic bag, which we should worship and put aside. We have this foam mold which you know this is the first thing that you should throw when you buy a handheld we're gonna put the handheld aside we have the generic amber neck uh, quick start manual which you know it's good when you buy your first handheld but when you're like me and let's face it you have more than one handheld by this point you probably have this thing memorized but this box my dear nerds this box contains what i can only describe as the very identity of me and you, of people like us. This box, and let me flip, this box contains, wait for it, it contains something very important. It contains a USB-A to USB-C cable, and this represents exactly who we are. You might think this is just a USB-C cable, but you're wrong. You need to take this and you need to put it in the bag full of cables, which you should be hoarding for at least 10 years. There's no excuse. I hope you have either a bag full of cables, a drawer full of cables, any variant of a place where you hoard cables. You need to have that. I pray that you have that, my dear nerd. And you need to take this, hoping that one of these years, someday, you will need it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I know you have another 20 of these lying around, but you don't know when you need the 21st cable. So, this we don't throw away, this we freaking worship, and this, while we have it here next to the other trash, we should take away, put it back in its cute little box over here. Wait a second, we must treat it with the respect it deserves and we're gonna put it away all of this other poop you know you can throw away you can burn you can actually don't burn i'm not inciting you to that you can do whatever you want with the rest of this garbage as for me since you're watching a video i'll do some youtube magic here and bam we are back so let's do a quick rundown on this thing I've heard a lot of my fellow YouTube colleagues saying that the D-pad is either great or bad. Personally, I think this is one of the best feeling D-pads that we have on an Anbernic device. This not only feels good, this is super accurate. Going by the tradition in our little history here, let's go in Contra. Actually, it's Contra. I don't know why I said Contra. And let's try something out. Doing Ross's Contra test, I think this is actually a very good d-pad i hit diagonals only when i want to hit diagonals i never had a false diagonal i just suck at this game this is not the fault of the d-pad itself i'm just horrible at it but i feel like i have a lot of control here and more than anything else come on vlad hit it jesus christ more than anything else i feel like my eyes don't get tired because the screen is a 4x3 4 inch screen which is in my opinion the sweet spot on these handhelds and if we're gonna sacrifice pocketability then we might as well go with a big 4 inch screen 4 inches is very very good for most people because your eyes don't get tired the joystick some people i actually saw hated on this thing quite a lot 
I have absolutely no complaints on it, except for one, Amber Neck decided for some reason which I will never ever freaking understand, they decided to put RGB on what's supposed to be a very retro handheld. Look my dear nerds, I understand RGB in Android handhelds, and un Android handhelds aren't really retro in my opinion, because they can't be retro. Android handhelds are more or less modern devices. Cheap handhelds that run Linux aren't supposed to feel like modern devices, they are supposed to feel like nostalgic devices. And no kid, none of us, when we were kids, did we ever have RGB on our freaking things. RGB is some PC or Android or Windows level handheld gaming stuff. We shouldn't have RGB on this, in my humble opinion. The only way in which RGB is actually decent to my eyes is if I make it a solid white color. Then it actually matches the aesthetic here. And hot take when it comes to the RG40XXV, I feel like this white color is the most beautiful of them all. If the Virgin Mary was a handheld, the purity would be more or less synonymous with the purity of the white of this handheld. This feels like such a clean aesthetic, such a beautiful white. I love the fact that they made, let me switch the camera, they made the buttons white as well. They made the stick white as well. There's something about everything being in the same color that's just simply amazing here. And I have to give props to Anberneck here, they absolutely nailed the feeling. The buttons, on the other hand, well, I think a lot of nerds will be pleased by this, they aren't really loud, they aren't nearly as loud as the ones that we had on the Anberneck RG35XXSP, if you remember that. Now those were some clicky buttons, my dear nerds. These ones, by comparison, they are very very good. But when you open it out of the box, you'll have this RGB rainbow effect, which I know it just seems cheesy to me, and you can also make it seizure inducing in case you want that for some reason. There's a lot of modes here, I'm not gonna go through all of them, I'm gonna let you explore this. Personally, I would either keep it at solid white, especially if you get the white variant, or I would close it completely, because it still looks good. And more importantly, when it's off, you don't actually bleed battery. Look, we need to say it straight when it comes to these handhelds. The battery is, I would say, one of the most important aspects of such a device. And when I say the battery, I mean the battery life. You want the handheld to last for a long time. RGB to me is effectively just a cute looking hole inside the bucket that is supposed to hold your water. You want as little holes as possible, therefore you want as little to no RGB as possible. Anyway, going back to our handheld, I heard a lot of people um, talking bad about the stick. It's, well, an analog stick, what do you expect? Do you want it to cook you dinner? No, it does the analog stick stuff and it does it fairly well. I personally like it, I like the D-pad as well. The buttons, they don't make a lot of sound, like I said before. On this side, we have the second micro SD card, which you can use to have your games separate from your OS. On this side, you have the OS SD card. We have the volume buttons here. You have the HDMI out, mini HDMI out plug here, in case you want to play on your TV. We have the back buttons. I'm actually quite a bit of a fan of these back buttons because there's some clever design here, my nerds. You see, they don't actually stick out over this curve, and this makes them not snag in the pocket. I didn't expect this at first, but if we compare to the Pauki the RG20SX, which I don't have anymore, those buttons stuck out a bit, and they were like tiny, tiny little claws that would grab on your pocket lining when you would try to take the handheld out. This doesn't apply here, and the stick, the joystick, is recessed enough. Actually, you can see it's not that much more taller than the D-pad itself, that it also doesn't snag in the pocket. But I feel like this is a moot point, because who the heck carries this in the pocket with them? This is portable, but it's not pocketable. The difference, my dear nerd, is huge. Pocketable, 
is the good old fashioned Mio Mini, which by the way, I'm gonna make a dedicated video on fairly soon, so stick around for that. This is not pocketable, this is portable. You throw this in a bag, you don't carry it around in the pocket. And as a quick size comparison, my nerds, here's the RG40XXV. I hate these names, I always did. And just so you get an idea of size comparisons, here's the original Mio Mini. Let me put it right next to this big guy. Actually, Mio Mini Plus, I meant, not Mio Mini. And here's the original Mio Mini. So, RG40XXV, Mio Mini Plus, Mio Mini. The Mio Mini looks like a cute little miniature toy compared to this Chungus of a big boy. In fact, I might as well live leave fingerprints on all of them since I started doing that. Does this bother you? <laughs> Is this annoying? Don't unsubscribe! I love you! <laughs> Stay! Look, my dear nerds, I think you know the Mio Mini is one of my favorite handhelds. In fact, this handheld single-handedly made me um, be passionate about retro games again. I had a big break before I actually bought a Mio Mini Plus, thanks to TechDweeb, by the way. In case you ever hate what I do with VladNerd, just know that VladNerd is TechDweeb's child, so take it up with him. And while I love the Mio Mini Plus, I always felt like the form factor, the size itself, the size was something that I had to tolerate. I always felt that it was there, but for better or worse, this provided a good experience. Now, I want to make a dedicated video on the Mio Mini, but what I can tell you is that more or less the same situation takes place with the Mio Mini as well, but with the RG40XXV, or let's say, I need a name for this, for, <laughs> for the snowy boy. <laughs> snowy. Snowy boy it is, actually. For the snowy boy, I don't feel the same thing that I felt with these two other handhelds. I only feel like my hands are not twisted in any sort of way. I don't have any wrist pains. I can literally play on this thing for hours and hours and hours on end. And this is freaking amazing. I've been conditioned to think that whenever I would play on a vertical handheld, I would always feel wrist discomfort after a while. But not with this big boy. With the snowy boy, I just feel like this is how my body, my brain, my hands feel comfortable with. It doesn't do anything more than any other handheld device. This is very important to remember. It doesn't do anything more. The heart of this, the SOC, is identical to the rest, identical to the H variant of this, it's identical to the RG35XXH, which is the smaller variant of the horizontal version of this. It has the same guts as the RG35XX+, Plus, which is the smaller variant of the vertical version of this. And yes, my dear nerd, I know how convoluted all of this sounds. Blame man, Burnek, don't blame me. But at the end of the day, the comfort that I feel when I play with this, it's quite frankly unmatched. No other handheld out there made me feel like I could play while not feeling the pain of playing for a while, for quite a bit of time. And that, in my opinion, is freaking amazing. So, is it worth it? Should you buy it? Well, my dear nerd, I can answer it by asking you two kinds of questions. Remember when I compared this freaking thing to a hammer? Do you prioritize comfort or pocketability? Because this ain't pocketable, but you can use it while you carry it in a bag. If you have no problem carrying it in a bag, then by all means, this provides the best experience for the games that the entire Linux handheld Anbernek lineup can play. And at the same time, if you have a smaller handheld, let's say you have a Mio Mini Plus or a Mio Mini, you can use those for pocketability and you can use this at home, on the couch, in the bathroom, let's face it, most of you beautiful nerds, you disgustingly enough use this on the toilet. Your handhelds have probably seen stuff which no handheld should see. And you can use this on the couch, you can use this, well, 
having a private moment with your partner and you do what adults do best and by that I mean you calculate bills while you're tired and dead on the inside. When you have various adult moments like that, this handheld provides the best experience to disconnect from it all. If you have a life and you want to get out of the house, then good luck putting this in your pocket. You'll feel like you're literally carrying a brick. But for inside, for playing in the house and still having that Game Boy experience, this is the best experience out there. And of course, the second factor that you need to ask yourself is, are you a vertical dude or a horizontal dude? Whichever you are, you're still nerdy enough to subscribe to my channel, so please do that, by the way. <laughs> Shameless segue. <laughs> so, if you're more into vertical handhelds, then this is a no-brainer. If not, buy an H variant of this bad boy. You know, the RG40XXH is also a very good handheld. I'm gonna make a comeback video to that as well. But if you are in these two categories, aka a vertical handheld lover, and perfectly happy using this mostly indoors, bear in mind you can also carry it around, but I would honestly use a bag for this, then, by all means, go forth with it, my nerd. Enjoy, you know, buy it, uh, play your favorite things. Don't expect it, however, to be subtle when you carry it around and you're at the grocery store or on a date. God, don't carry it in your pocket while you're on a date. <laughs> Actually, you should. Actually, you should totally do that. But anyway, my dear nerds, these are my thoughts about the Anbernek RG40XXV. Tell me what you think. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I think it has a place. We're swimming in an ocean of handhelds of all freaking shapes and sizes. This big chungus has a place in that ocean. This is the apex predator of cheap handhelds. You know, and it goes in the water like this and feasts on the littler handhelds. Tell me what you think of the RG40XXV and more importantly, the main takeaway of this video is, no matter what handheld you like, subscribe to my channel. This is, <laughs> this is a very shameless plug that I'm doing. But seriously, I would love it if you would subscribe. You know, the thing with YouTube is that I hate seeing YouTubers asking, hey, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Unfortunately, they have to do this. They have to do this dance, this annoying like and subscribe dance because that tickles the algorithm. So if you love what I do, please tickle the algorithm, my dear nerds. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you really like what I do, and if you can, only if you can, no pressure, feel free to support me directly through either Patreon or by becoming a channel member. And if you do that, you'll end up on my wall of fame and your name will be there with awesome people like TechDweeb, Joey from Joy's Retro Handhelds, and Russ from Retro Game Corps, and you will be featured in each and every one of my videos. And if you decide to join my Discord, I'll give you a special role there as well, as a small thank you for the fact that you're supporting me directly. But anyway, my dear nerds, this is all from me. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, always remember, and this is not a gimmick, I love you very much. See you in the next one.